and your journey and more than anything, um, your story. Because the thing is, is that I've been realizing more and more that people's stories are really important in life. And to be able to have a place to be able to tell your story and connect with people through story is huge. Well, it's true. And I couldn't agree with you more. And in fact, that's a big reason why I do what I do is because I, I, I believe that everybody has a story, John. And, and so many of these stories and so many of these people, these stories will never be heard because so many people who have these amazing stories you know, don't have the skill or the confidence or the opportunity to get in front of an audience, whether it's on a stage or it's on a screen or on a podcast or whatever, and, and share their story. And, and I learned that you know, many years I've been training professional speakers around the world now for about 35 years. And, and the, the way I got into that was this. Um, I've been on the live stage since the age of six. OK, and now I'm 60 now. So that's, you know, 54 years ago. Now, at six, I wasn't speaking as much as I was playing my guitar. I was a little guitar guy, you know, and I had, you know, big, thick glasses, skinny little guy. I could barely reach over the guitar. But I was on on stages playing my guitar because it was a bit of a novelty, a little guy like that playing playing the guitar. Um, and then I started, you know, telling stories when I was playing and, and, and I just loved being on the stage and in front of people. And then in my teens, um, I joined a band or I formed a band and, and I was not singing in the band. I was just a guitar player. I got really good at playing lead guitar. So I formed a band and we took that on the road. And then by the time I was in my early twenties, we had made some, some records. And I'm sure that some of your audience still remembers the little black records, you know, the, they look like black CDs, yeah. you know, the, the 45. Yeah. So we were making those that just dated myself again. And then um, what happened was I got fascinated with the world of speaking. And I guess I was uh, 22 years old, something like that. And I stumbled across a video of the great Zig Ziglar, whom anybody in the speaking business knows who, who Zig Ziglar is. And, and I was fascinated by this guy because I'm watching him on this video. He's on the stage. He's got no equipment. He's got no bandmates. His audience is not drunk uh, and he's just speaking. And I thought this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And I was just fascinated with the concept. So I started taking some steps and I joined a, a major training organization out of the U.S. called the Dale Carnegie Training Organization. And I joined them yeah. as a student. I took all their courses and then I went to work for them in sales. Uh, and then I became an assistant uh, instructor. And then ultimately I got I got trained to be a Dale Carnegie instructor. And what happened was when it came time for me to sign the agreement, to sign the contract, I couldn't sign it. Uh, and the reason I couldn't sign it was because um, there was there were things that they were teaching that I just didn't believe in enough to commit myself to teaching them, and and so I said I can't I can't sign this because there's there's enough in here that I cannot authentically represent, and it would be doing you know them a disservice and doing me a disservice. So I declined to sign, and then I went on my own and started training people just with my own insights because having been on stage my whole life. I had some idea of what works and what doesn't work and all those things. And then, uh, so over time, um, I, I just got really good at, at coaching speakers and, and I'm a speaker as well. I've traveled all over the world and I, and I speak and I'm an award-winning speaker, but my gift really is taking, you know, like you, John, and putting you on a stage in front of an audience and pulling magic out of you that you never knew existed. And that's, that's my gift like my real gift. So that's what I've been doing around the world now for, well, since then, so close to 35 years now, I've been, I've been doing that. So that's where I come from. And, and so what I'm finding today, it's really interesting, John, because, you know, over the past two and a half years or two years or so, you know, what's been going on with COVID and all those things. And so many experts, um, you know, entrepreneurs, coaches, consultants, thought leaders, you know, healers, um, they, they've turned to the screen uh, to present and they've gotten comfortable presenting on the screen at summits and on podcasts and on, you know, webinars and all these things. They've come become very comfortable with the screen. And so many of them now are thinking, you know what? I think I want to go out onto the stage, onto the live stage. And they're not ready. They're not prepared because this experience on a screen is complete or over a microphone is completely different than an experience on a stage. And, and so 
what I'm doing now is a lot of my work um, is people who are leaving their careers and want to speak, people who have amassed decades of wisdom and experience and knowledge and creativity and content, and they want to bring it to a stage. And so I'm the one that helps them prepare that signature talk and then prepare them to get on those stages and, you know, really rock the world and monetize their message from the stage. So that's kind of where I'm from.